Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Have a repot to do. One of my favorite aloe plants. Or not one of, it is my favorite aloe. I don't, do I need to explain why I need to repot this plant? Surely you can look at this and see what the problem is, right? Yes, yeah. Very long time ago, outgrew this container and it's just, it won't stand up. It's been driving me crazy. There's a justicia in here that I kind of like. It's not one of my, we don't need to go into all that. I can't water this container when it just, it refuses to stand upright. And it's not good for the plant. I mean, look at it. It's been like this for a few months now. It can be embarrassing to admit, but I, I'm not embarrassed to admit it. Aloes are tough plants. So I just kind of kept pushing this to the back burner. I was handling what I consider to be more important things. So I was like, you know, it'll live. It's an aloe. But the time has finally come to go ahead and get this unpotted and put into a different container and give this plant the life it deserves. This is an aloe that I really do like. It's been around for a long time. I think I potted this up in like 2018. Maybe 2019, and uh, it was a big metal pail with some sand and some little beach decor. And then almost lost this in 2020. I had other people taking care of my plants and it was getting over water, so it started to rot. It's been through a lot. And uh, the, so have the other plants in that container that it's grouped in there with. If I'm recalling properly here, I think what happened here was back in 2020, when I noticed there was some rot on this, and like I said, there are other people taking care of the plants. I went ahead and I just cut the stem and shoved it into this container because I knew that it was a quick draining soil. I probably left it to dry for a while. I don't remember, but so here we are, 2023. Basically 2022 though, it just got into, it hasn't been three years. I'm probably like two and a half. That's nowhere near as bad as three. I did figure, may as well film this because something may arise during the process that might be useful information to someone. Otherwise it's just, repotting a sad aloe plant. I'm not going to be doing anything to propagate it. I think I can. I'd be surprised if there are any offshoots on the plant that's not, you know, in offshoot mode right now. In barely surviving mode. Cactus palm citrus mix. I have a lot to say about this, especially this line right here. Great for succulents. That's really what this video should be about, is talking about the soil. Poured a bunch out here. Just gonna have a nice look at it, get it nice and close, and see what's going on with this mix. There's some slow release, some perlite, a good amount of sand, which is good for cactus and succulents. There's also a decent amount of bark in here for a potty mix. Cool, that's great. However, bark is not something I'm ever looking for in a cactus mix ever. Think about the desert, where the desert type cactus are from. Are there a lot of trees and things that are always dropping their leaves? There are a lot of organic materials laying around the soil. No, not at all. That's just in there for the broad spectrum application, cactus, palm, and citrus mix. I would gladly put palms and citrus in this, even some succulents. And I actually, I even think that aloe would more than likely be totally fine in this mixture, the aloe vera that is. They're pretty sturdy plants. Since I have my plants inside and outside, you know, outside during the warmer part of the year and inside whenever it's going to be below 50, so basically November through May here in St. Louis. That's generally when I have the aloes inside. Because of that, I have to make sure that it's a mix that's going to drain very, very quickly. Indoors, I control how much moisture is going to the soil. So I can look at this mix and understand its moisture holding capacity after I've watered it a few times especially and realize how much water the plant does and doesn't need to not have this sopping wet at all times. For outdoors, don't have that sort of control because precipitation, right? So I'm gonna add some pumice into here. That's what I'm using. Perlite would work fine. It would be a much more affordable option. I just, I'm completely out. I thought I had some, but it turns out that I don't have any. So I'm just going to use pumice. This will do the same thing. Pumice is great. Gravel's great. Perlite, ideal really, just because it's more affordable. An easy option out of all of these. Surface can work well, just like any type of little chips. You get it. Just want, I don't want this to hold together. I wanna pick it up and have it fall apart. We'll give this a good squeeze and just have it crumble. That means it's gonna be nice and airy. There's gonna be lots of oxygen in the mix and water will flow through it quickly. That's what we want with the desert type cactus and succulents. Having a well-draining soil isn't just for the plant. It's also partially just for peace of mind. Protect the plant from myself. Should I accidentally overwater the plant? So I don't intend on doing that. And uh, that way, if we have periods where there's a lot of rain outside, I don't have to worry about going out and moving this plant to a spot that's sheltered. I don't have a lot of overhangs or anything like that in my backyard, so the only sheltered spots are very, very dark and shaded, which is fine temporarily if I'm just 
moving the plant for a day or two. That's really not that big of a deal. Ideally, I would like to be able to have the pot sitting someplace where it's going to get the proper amount of light, which for me means not a lot of shelter, a lot of shelter from the rain. Yeah, figured I was gonna need to mix up some more of that. I think that should do, I mix up some more. I did mean to say that if you're making your own cactus mix by just using an all-purpose potting mix, whether you're using perlite, gravel, sand, anything of the matter, combine the all-purpose potty mix with that other gritty material. Generally, 40 to 50% is a good way to go. Main thing is, just as I mentioned before, just don't want it to hold together. That way, you know, lots of oxygen will be down in there. Water will move through there nice and fast. Want good, sharp drainage. That adds a bit of a safeguard against overwatering if you have your plants outside or if you just forget. Sometimes we overwater our plants. It happens. I went ahead and pulled this out of the container and separated it from the justicia up here and that bromeliad. There's a good amount of roots on here. I was pleasantly surprised to see that. Majority of the roots are intact. I don't think I had to tear up anything from the aloe. The aloe itself doesn't have great roots because this wasn't getting a proper watering. Even though they can go dry, it's an aloe, right? They don't need tons of water. With that pot being on its side, it just, it wasn't ideal. If there were one tip that I would ever give about growing aloe, aloe vera, the barbensis, it would be to use a big, heavy container because almost every container that I've grown an aloe in ends up being too lightweight and they fall right over. I'm also not afraid to overpot this. It's something to be careful about, right? You don't want too much moisture outside of the root ball because then it doesn't get used and then you risk rot with the plant. I also don't like to be repotted all that often. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick it into a larger container that is maybe one size larger than it needs to go into. Say I don't have a container that's the next size down from this one that I think this will fit in very well. I pulled a whole bunch of the old dead decaying stuff off of there. Need that out of there because I don't want to have to worry about rotting material when we're trying to avoid rot on the plant. All this stuff, all these little guys that are down here. The other reason this needed a wider pot is because this thing has a pretty wonky stem on it from it being on its side off and on for a couple of years. And also just to clarify, I didn't just leave this plant on its side at all times. It's just probably once a month would fall over and it would take me a couple of days to realize it had fallen over and then I would pick it back up. But that's all it takes. Do that for a couple of years and it, this is what you end up with. My approach with this plant because of the wonky stem down here has been to use a wider container that just perfectly fits the stem. So that's going to help hold this up right here. Having the plant lifted from the surface of the soil is important when trying to avoid rot. So I may as well have something that's going to hold it up higher. These are going to dry up some more and I'll be able to pull them off. Main thing was I wanted this to be supported and I wanted the body of the stem to be able to be in contact with the soil. That if it wants to, there's more area there for the base of the plant from here and down to put up pups. Cause mama plant's not looking too hot. So my real reason for saving the plant isn't so much that I want to save this one specifically. I would like for it to offshoot so I can take those offshoots, the little side plants, cut them off and move them into their own containers and have a redo. This will straighten itself out, and I don't mind this crazy Medusa look that it has to it, but we all know that that's not what it's supposed to look like, right? Certainly not ideal. Want the plant to have that nice V shape to it. Anytime you start to get these twisties and floppies, that means the plant's not getting proper lighting. Squishiness in here, that can be a sign of overwatering. Although more often than not, it's usually in my experience, a sign of the plant not getting enough light. The aloes do like a good amount of light. When I have this outside, I let it get full-blown morning sun and afternoon shade. It's variegated also, so that's something you have to take into account. Variegation is going to make the plant less sturdy and stable when it comes to lighting, right? It can scorch more easily than direct sun. Inside, as much bright direct light as possible. If I see brown spots, then I try and just scoot it back from the window. That's what I would do. I don't grow this inside anymore. It stays out here in the grow space, but it will be going underneath a grow light that's nice and bright directly above it. I don't want this plant being any further confused about where the sun is, or its light source, I should say. I'm surprised how well this is holding up. I figured I would need to go in with some stakes to help support it, but I think that the stem and there being just the right length in here is helping with that. After I water this in, I'm just about out of soil, so hopefully I won't need too much more, if any. Maybe avoid pouring soil right into the nooks and crannies of the plants that have a tendency to rot. That's not great. I have a feeling that when I water this in, I'm going to need to add some stakes in here. It just looks like it's going to tilt one way or the other. So I'm gonna hold off on watering it in until I have it set where I want it to stay for the remainder of the indoor growing season. It'll be on a shelf underneath some grow lights for a couple of 
combine spinach thing. <laughs> Poor plant. I will probably end up adding stakes around those sides. Also, I should point out that stem that I planted in there is right at surface level. Because of that, I'm not all that concerned about it rotting, but it is something that we need to keep an eye on. That stem would normally be up and out of the soil, not submerged in it right at the surface level. That doesn't concern me. You think about the aloes in the wild, they'll grow up flop over and then make contact and hopefully root out along the stem. Still something I'm going to have to be mindful of and keep an eye on, really have to make sure that that doesn't rot out. So I'll be poking it and checking it for firmness, making sure that it's not getting squishy. Be paying attention to make sure that the growth is starting to straighten itself back out, which it will. As the new growth comes out, it should all come out nice and straight. Get that nice V shape we want to see with the aloe plants. And everything, I think, should be just fine considering all the other stuff this plant's been through, repot into a nice new container with some fresh mix. Shouldn't hurt it. I'll get this watered in, probably staked up just to be safe, regardless of whether or not it starts to flop, because why wouldn't I, right? It's been through enough. May as well throw some stakes in there to help hold it in place until it starts to root into the container better. And then fertilize probably monthly with a dilute cactus fertilizer. They don't need much fertilizer. In fact, it can cause blemishes and some undesirable things in the plant, but I need to stimulate those roots to get moving. So this isn't like your average aloe, that, clearly, right? Hopefully your aloe doesn't look like this, but if it does, it's not a big deal. Stuff happens, plants, they don't always look fantastic like the justicia back there. Not great, but a little cutback, some fresh soil, that thing's going to be fine. Oh, this aloe. I'll be giving this aloe, just your general aloe care that you would give any aloe plant. One difference, but the general aloe care, nice, bright, direct light, keep it above 50 degrees, water sparingly, maybe once a month during the winter time when the plant's inside not noticing active growth. It's pretty warm out here. And it's going to be under grow lights. So this is more than likely going to be watered, I would say uh, every seven to 10 days is my guess, but I'm just going to be going by how the plant looks and how the soil feels when I go in there and check the soil. Fertilizing, typically they don't need much. Generally just fertilize these a couple times a year with a cactus fertilizer. I will be fertilizing more often than that, but I will be diluting that fertilizer down. If you over fertilize them, you can end up with some blemishes inside of the growth that's irreversible. You get these little edema spots that just look really bad, these orange spots and uh, just overall undesirable growth. You've seen what's going on here, right? I have a lot of roots to get developed and my main goal here is to get this pot filled up with roots and get offshoots off of this plant which is totally doable in just a few months time this will be looking like a much different happier plant comment down below tips tricks suggestions always appreciated i'll keep everybody updated you'll see it around in the vlogs this is a big container it's not going to be one that's gonna be tucked away it'll be on the shelves with the other plants so you'll see it if you watch the vlogs i'm sure and i'm sorry that this thing is not centered in the middle of that container i'm sure that that's driving some of you absolutely crazy but it's just it is the way it is it's what had to be done I'm gonna live with it it's fine everything's fine now i need to get the san severo repotted I'm going to do that move this over the shelves give it a nice drink and just wait for it to start looking new all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye